Hello, ICO friends. The opening of the Indianapolis Chamber Orchestra's 2022-23 season is just around the corner. We've got a marvelous opening night program. I'm delighted to be joined by our soloists on that opening night. Kenny Broberg is with us. Kenny, great to see you. Great to see you too. We're really looking forward to this. I'm particularly looking forward to the fact that I get to work with you twice in the fall. Uh, Rachmaninoff, second piano concerto, and then in October, when the ICO opens its season with the Schumann, the beautiful Schumann Piano Concerto. So we take just an opportunity for our patrons, for our audience to get to know you a little bit better. You know, you started piano very young in Minnesota. Can you tell us how music came into your life? Yeah, well, I actually started on violin before I started piano. Um, you know, my brother, my brother started piano lessons. So my, my parents figured, okay, well, we already got one pianist. Let's, let's you know, make... Can he do another instrument? So, so I started on the violin, and uh, and you know I, I liked it, but I was really always drawn to the piano, and I really always wanted to to be a pianist. So I, I sort of switched to that pretty quickly, um, and uh, really grew to love it immediately. I I was always really fascinated by being able to do everything yourself. You know, with the piano, you can be an orchestra, you can be an opera singer, you can. Uh, you, you can, it's, it's such an imagination based instrument, kind of, you can be anything you want to be. So I love that aspect of it. So it sounds like you grew up in a very musical house then. Um, yes and no. I was, I, I grew up, I, I, neither of my parents are musicians, uh, but I grew up with parents that had an appreciation for the arts and appreciation for music and wanted to instill that in me. And, uh, I kind of just, uh, made a career out of it. That's marvelous. I could use some advice. I've got a 10 year old and a six year old who are fighting me tooth and nail to sit down at the piano every night and play, you know, two minutes or so. So that's fantastic. I love these stories. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about, you know, your career because, uh, you know, you've got this uh, multifaceted career. You're teaching, you're playing chamber music, solo recitals and concerto appearances, but you had a rigorous process, you know, over several years here through the competition circuit. Of course, Indianapolis's uh, audiences know you from uh, the APA, recent APA competition where you won uh, the Crystal DeHaan Fellowship, but you've also medaled uh, top medals in Clyburn, uh, Tchaikovsky competition, Sydney, New Orleans. T talk to us a little bit about what the competition circuit is like. And, you know, it's so dramatically different than just going out and playing a recital. It's rigorous, the amount of repertoire, the, 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 the tension, you know, the nerves. Just want to hear your perspective. Yeah, well, I, I always try to approach it the same way. As, as you would for recitals, but in reality, you, you are correct. It is, it, it is more rigorous. It's, uh, it, it, it's a different kind of situation. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I always, I, I have a, un, I have, I have kind of a different relationship with competitions and that uh, kind of a love hate relationship with them. And that, uh, you know, I wouldn't have a career without them there's certain things I appreciate a lot about them. I actually think that making, uh, that, that, that doing all these competitions really made me a better musician. Uh, that, that every time I, I, I did one, that it was, it was the motivation th uh, that I, that I needed to really, uh, try to get myself to the next level and try to grow myself. Uh, you know, at the, at the same time, of course, the thing that everyone always says about competitions is true that, uh, <clears throat> that that is not really what music is about, of course. Uh, and, you know, competitions are such a subjective thing that, uh, that you know, the, the result that you personally think should happen doesn't always happen. Sometimes, you know, I, I don't know about me personally, because I don't, I don't listen to anybody else when I do these competitions. But, uh, you, you know, from, from watching other competitions, you, you can tell that, uh, that, you know, there, there isn't always an easy right or wrong answer. So, uh, yeah, they're, they're a very complicated thing. It's, it's kind of, uh, for, for me, it was the best way to grow my career and, and, and to, uh, grow myself a little bit. So, uh, so yeah, it's, it's, uh, I definitely don't regret doing it. You know, you've offered to share a little bit of your performance with us on this uh, Mocktails, a masterpiece. Can you cue up the, the clip that we're going to play for our audience? Yeah, so I'll play uh, this. This is a video of me playing uh, a Faré uh, Barcarol at the uh, American Pianist Association competition in Indianapolis uh, last year. 
And uh, this is, I've, I've recently, actually over the pandemic, I got very into Faré. I wasn't, you know, of course I knew some pieces by him, you know, choral music uh, especially, but uh, I really got into his piano music uh, and, and, his, and his art songs over, over the pandemic and uh, really became kind of, a, kind of obsessed with it. Uh, and it's, it's a very unique world. People think of Faré as, as having a very narrow window of the kind of, the kind of music that he writes. It's always, uh, which is sort of true. It's always, uh, very lyrical, uh, you know, tends to, uh, not be very showy music. Uh, he tends to write more, uh, more soft, sort of Chopin-esque melodies. But within that, there's a huge range of, of emotion and, and of color, especially the, the, the harmonic progressions that he uses are, are just completely out of this world. So, uh, so I absolutely love Faré and I absolutely love this piece. I love that description of say, I share uh, affinity for Faré's music, but there just isn't much for the orchestra, you know, a couple of smaller pieces, some incidental music, obviously, but his piano music is exquisite. I'm, listening, I'm looking forward to hearing you play this. Thanks.
that was Kenny Broberg performing 4A. You know, we have a, a beautiful concerto, one of the real staples in the repertoire that you're going to be performing with the ICO uh, this October. And it's the Schumann Piano Concerto. I don't think it's really ever suffered from a lack of performances. Pianists love it. Conductors love programming it. Audiences are enraptured with it. You know, it's got a great history. Maybe you could share a little bit of your thoughts, maybe not only just on the concerto, but on Schumann's piano writing in general. Yeah, Schumann is uh, Schumann's one of the great composers, and and this is one of the great concertos. It's, uh, you know, it's it's sort of become uh, uh, very often put together with the Greek concerto, of course, uh, and uh, you know the two great Romantic concertos written in A minor uh, that but they both have these uh, really dramatic openings, especially um, the Schumann is. Uh, you know, this is actually will be my first time playing it with orchestra. This will be my debut Schumann. Uh, so it's it's kind of a piece that I always avoided playing a little bit because of how famous it is and uh, because of how how uh, how much it's played. But uh, when I started learning it, you know, and, and this happens every time I, I learn a piece like this, like uh, this happened with Beethoven Third Concerto last year that uh, that I wasn't sure how much I liked it because I've spent my whole life hearing it and was never really dying to play it. But then as soon as I start working on it, I realize, you know, why this piece was was famous in the first place. And I start discovering it for myself and looking at it in a new way. And so that's kind of the experience that I'm going through with the Schumann Concerto right now. I, I love the, the anecdote you know, that Robert Schumann was known in his lifetime by many people as Clara Schumann's husband. His wife was one of the great pianists of the early 1800s, and she did a lot to champion his music, particularly after he died. And you know, yeah. this concerto, I believe, you can correct me if I'm wrong, started off as a fantasy, the first yeah. movement, then was revised, and he added the other two movements. Um, but it really has endured, you know, it, it was championed by Clara Schumann uh, and helped promote it. Um, you know, Schumann, it's so interesting that, you know, he was a critic, he was a, a writer, his orchestral works are often criticized for their orchestration or as inflated piano pieces, but he really did a lot as one of the early romantics to, to change the course of piano writing. Am I wrong? Is that correct? Mm -hmm. No, and, and I actually kind of look at, let, at it the other way. I look at his piano music as, as transcribed orchestral scores. I love that. So, you know, so, 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 so it can work either way. Uh, his, his piano writing is, is very idiomatic. Uh, it's, it's more idiomatic than, uh, it, than Brahms, for example. Uh, and, uh, he has a lot of, he has, he has a way of doubling stuff and, and, and creating different kinds of colors that, that is unique only to himself. Uh, and so I really appreciate that about him. The, uh, the concerto is, uh, you're right. It was originally conceived as a fantasy and the first movement is really uh, a very standalone uh, kind of thing, and uh, and it doesn't have the normal normal concerto structure, and that it doesn't have a slow movement. Instead of the slow movement, there's just a a little intermezzo that uh, replaces it. But all three movements are connected thematically. There there is an emotional connection between everything, and it all fits together very well. Well, we're looking forward to your performance of this, your first performance with the orchestra, as you said with the Indianapolis Chamber Orchestra, of course, Rock Modernoff second with Orchestra Indiana. Some great opportunities to hear this very talented pianist right here in Indiana. Opening night is October 15th for the Indianapolis Chamber Orchestra at the Schrott Center for the Performing Arts. On that program, we have a second half of Mendelssohn's Italian Symphony and Hugo Wolf's Italian Serenade. And we open that program with a marvelous work by a very popular and talented composer, Jessie Montgomery, will perform her banner. Kenny, thanks for spending a little bit of time with us. We look forward to your performance. Thank you. Take care. You too.